Hello everyone, welcome back to my final list 2019 video and we're going to end things with my top 50 favorite albums of 2019. It's a bit late now but better late than never and what we have is the 50 albums I listened to and enjoyed the most from the previous year. It's just about albums, not mini albums, no compilations, no archivals, no EPs. And of course it's just about my opinion. Feel free to list your own favorite albums from 2019 down in the comments. And let's just jump straight into it because I don't want this video to be huge. So at first at number 50 we have Artificial Extinction by Hoshiko. In my opinion Hoshiko they're one of my favorite bands when it comes to agrotech and heavily industrial dance music. They've done some amazing jobs and this one is one of their more versatile ones, they have lots of different genre bands and some of them work really well on this album. At number 49 we have the comeback from Rammstein with their self-titled album, which once again is one of those occasions where the singles are absolutely amazing, but the rest of the album doesn't manage to stand up as much. But still, we have a really great result with this brand new album. Number 48, we have another huge comeback by Cozy Funny Duty, mostly known being a member on Throbbing Crystal. This album just goes into some sort of industrial techno directions and there are some really great tracks to this thing. Next up, we have one of the new releases from Rudolf Eber, which is a really weird sound art, sound collage album, it's all over the place, it's haunting, it's disturbing and it makes for one of the most unique experiences coming from an artist who is usually known for making some really weird and obscure stuff. Posthumous Humiliation by Peace Crave is easily one of the nastiest and one of the most brutal death metal albums, including some elements of war metal as well in this particular album and having one of the filthiest album covers ever. Of course I cannot show the original one. Defeater's self-titled album has some of the better examples of post-hardcore music you can find in recent years, Really solid work once again from the band. Black to Comb 7 Horses for 7 Kicks is easily one of the most haunting and one of the most terrifying experiences you can find in music for with this really dark and heavily devastating ambient album combining lots of different genres to it. Really one of a kind experience. We also have another great comeback with L7, after almost 20 years they finally release a new album and the great thing about Scatter the Rats is that it feels like not even one day has passed. It sounds like the band is back to form with some really solid stuff. Aziz Abrahim is one of those artists I discovered through Glitterbeat Records and it's easily one of the best combinations of world music with some more modern elements of electronic and rock music and it makes for a really beautiful album from this year. Mimic is a Plunder Phonics Vaporwave project from Greece and as far as I'm not the hugest fan of some Vaporwave stuff, this is exactly how I like Vaporwave music to sound like with the album Negativity. It's all over the place, it's really chaotic, at times it's funny and it's combined with some really nice dark ambient moods. Forget almost everything about my initial review on the brand new album from Hobo Johnson. This is definitely one of the greatest comebacks when it comes to a sophomore release. This is miles better than what he delivered with his very first album and not only that but the album managed to grow even more on me so far up that it makes it in my list. If you count out the fact that some of the tracks might sound a bit cringy you get a great experience with this album. State of Mind's Land of the Blind is easily one of the greatest examples of drum and bass music currently coming from some of the masters in the genre. Never would have thought in a million years that there would be a Taylor Swift album that I would actually enjoy as much. But here we are, Lover is surprisingly good. I honestly really like this album from Taylor Swift this is without a doubt my favorite work from her. I'm really amazed by this. Higher Brothers' 5 stars is also another pleasant surprise. Really dig their direction to some aggressive trap music 
and a combination with some more pop rap tunes. It's one of the directions they take with this album actually work really well and it makes for a really fascinating result. Moral Order has done multiple albums in a very short period of time, but Cryptia is the one that managed to click with me. One of the better examples of just pure and filthy power electronics music. Grey Area by Little Sims is another album in the hip hop sphere that really grew on me and I think that there are some really really nice songs over here, some really sharp and on-point lyrics and some great flows and features on this thing. This might not be my favorite album from here but Hante still manages to do what she does best with this really sad dark wave atmosphere that she manages to express with every one of her works. One of the most mesmerizing and unique experiences is Bantu Mentale self-titled, a very nice combination of traditional world music with some elements of rock and electronic music. A new album from Moga is one of the things I was really excited about and even though this doesn't manage to be up to par with Exercises in Futility, it's still one of the more solid black metal albums in 2019. 2019 was a huge year for Filmmaker, without a doubt. Out of everything he has released, Somber Realm has to be my favorite one, by far. Here Comes the Cowboy by Mac DeMarco is an album that didn't go that well, but for me personally, I can't really see what this album doesn't have up to par with some of his previous releases. I think this is another solid effort from Mac DeMarco, that might just be me. But yeah, this album got some really negative feedback. Sia Labyrinth and Diplo collab in one of the catchiest and one of the most bright and cute pop albums to come out in 2019. And I really like it, just for that reason. Lament by Total combines greatly crust punk with black metal and it makes for a really fascinating result for a metal album from this year. It might not manage to surpass emotion, but Dedicated is another great pop work from Carly Rae Jepsen. My very first signed album is here, and it's beautiful. Constantly in Love is such a gorgeous and ethereal dark wave album. You definitely need to check it out if you're a fan of this sort of music. A really short, straight to the point, Power Electronics release by Climax Denial. It's really good, it's horrifying and it has some of his best works. Talking about another great comeback, we have Paradox by Nocturnus AD, definitely one of the best examples of technical death metal music I've heard ever, like ever. I wouldn't expect Danny Brown to just surpass Atrocity Exhibition, but I'm really glad for the final result of You Know What I'm Saying. A really laid-back hip-hop album, a change of pace for Danny Brown, but it works really, really well with his delivery and the instrumentals from Q-Tip are gorgeous. This is one of the two releases from Current Value. Pure is one of the more versatile albums he has done and I like how in this one he tries to go a bit more to some of the old school stuff but also combining this neurofunk side of his sound in recent years and it makes for some really, really great tracks. Some of my favorite ones actually he has released this entire decade. This is possibly the most underground thing in my list and it's She Gets What She Wants by Niku Dharma. Truly one of the more surprising things to find and easily one of the most intense and one of the most head crushing harsh noise albums to come out in recent years. Truly a must for fans of the genre. Susu released one of their weirdest but also one of their most haunting and one of their more horrifying and devastating albums in their entire career, making Girl with Bastard of Fruit easily one of the best albums they have ever released. I discovered this album like one or two months back and it has easily become one of my favorite ones from 2019. Really love the blend of sounds and the really dark atmosphere on this one. It's a great release. Hyde's sophomore album is far better and even more aggressive than its predecessor. It also manages to offer one of the greatest examples of post-industrial and power electronics dark wave music imaginable. This easily has to be one of my favorite Chemical Brothers releases since the release of their debut, Exit Planet Dust, 
Seriously, that's how much I like this album. Talk about the comeback. Like, the Chemical Brothers have a lot of albums in their catalog that were just mediocre, but this one, this is on another level. This is exactly the sound I wanted from the Chemical Brothers, and I definitely got that with No Geography. Such an intense and really nice, catchy and cleverly crafted electronic album. Full of Hell, they just did it once again with Whipping Choir, resulting to one of their best albums in terms of sound and production, and with some of their harshest works yet. I really love how they keep pushing the sound of extreme metal music. In 2019, there has been a huge drama with this whole Batuska situation, but it also resulted to a great album from Krzysztof Drabikowski. Not only did he manage to embody greatly the true sound of Baduska, but he also made an album that in my opinion it even surpasses its predecessor. And it's easily one of my favorite black metal releases from 2019. Absolutely in love with this album. We have another release from Rudolf Eber. This one is just one lengthy track and it's even weirder, easily one of the weirdest and one of the most disturbing albums I've heard in 2019. The brand new mixtape from Flume is a surprisingly amazing release that I didn't listen to for a very long time, but when I finally got into it, this album really managed to blow my mind. This is easily my favorite thing in terms of production in 2019. Really forward thinking, some beautiful and incredible sounds. And I dig this experimental direction from Flume far more in comparison to some of his previous works. I really don't know what to say about the Gero It's easily one of the weirdest and one of the most obscure acts ever, in my opinion. This album further proves it. If you don't find it weird that a harsh noise and noise core band from Japan releases an album that is full of 50s lounge music, then just stare at this album cover while you listen to this album and it makes it one of the weirdest experiences ever. One step before the top 10, we have Tower Block Knife Crime by Gorset. Do not get distracted by the synthwave slash vaporwave aesthetics of the album cover. What we have instead is easily the harshest release from Gorset, who was known back in the day into releasing some lolicor stuff, but now he has gone into some more straightforward breakcore releases. This one, however, seems to go a bit more into power noise with a bunch of just few distortion pedals, making an album that is easily one of my favorite work out of numerous and various releases he has done so far. <laughs> this album is absolutely insane. And now it's top 10 time and I'm going to start with one of the most beautiful releases I've heard all year. It's this brand new collab project of Joseph Van Huysem and Jim Jarmus and this album is just a really nice combination of drone elements and just loot sections from Joseph Van Huysem and it makes for such a beautiful atmospheric album and I truly, truly recommend this to anyone. At number 9, Sidewalks and Skeletons just pushes the entire genre of Witch House forward with this brand new release, Entity, featuring vocals from Goo Monday in almost each single track over here and it makes for a really captivating experience, containing some of the most aggressive elements you can hear in a Witch House track but also having some really beautiful atmospheric moments. Really impressive work from Sidewalks and Skeletons once again. Number 8 is Subhuman Principle by Linecraft. Such a raw and filthy pure power electronic sound on this particular album. Blank Mass released another great album. Animated Violence Mild has all of the elements you would pretty much expect in a Blank Mass album, but I still love the atmosphere that he brings with every single one of his works. This combination of beauty and aggression is something that only he manages to achieve the way that he does. Name another hip-hop album that would have features like the Rita 
and pedestrian deposit. Name another album that would have field recordings as beat for rapping. Name a track with a weirder structure than Story 7. Name another rap album that would have an 80 minute field recording track of a piano burning. This brand new album from Clipping has all of these elements and even more, making this easily my favorite experimental and industrial hip hop album coming out in 2019. We have another release from Sacred Bones Records released the same day with animated violence smiled by Blank Mass, and that is the brand new collab project of Uniform and the Body. And the great thing about this is that I didn't enjoy as much their debut, but this one is miles better exceeding all of my expectations, making this my favorite collab project of the year, showing that Uniform and the Body can do some incredible works together and this album contains easily uh, one of my favorite works from both of those artists. Really amazing and hard hitting album. I really could never expect this, but All Star by Dark Throne is easily one of my favorite works they've ever done in their guitar career, surpassing almost everything they've done in about 20 years. This is how much I like this album. This heavy doom black direction really works for them. This is an impressive album with some of the best riffs they've ever written. Greatest album from Tyler the Creator. I really like the blend of genres in this thing. I really, really dig this Neo Soul direction and it's one of the best breakup albums. Like, I really don't know what to say about this album. It easily deserves the praise it has gotten. It's impressive in terms of production, lyrically wise, delivery. It's an impressive album. It's been 13 years, but it was worth the wait. I got the physical release of this thing. I got the physical release of Fear Inoculum. God, this was such an expensive album. This is easily the most expensive thing I have in my collection, but it definitely worth it. This album is impressive. Like, it might be my least favorite album from Tool, but it's such an incredible album still that it manages to be in my top two on my favorite albums of 2019. Like, I don't think there are that many things to say about this album that I haven't already told in my 28 minute review of this album, but it's definitely worth your time. It sounds like their most mature and their most laid back album to have done. And it's truly an experience that I had a lot of years to just experience while listening to this album. And at number one, you know what it is if you have seen any of my recent videos, but it's an album that is even longer by the 80 minute Fear Inoculum. This is probably the longest album in this list, but it's Senex by Current Value, the second album Current Value released this year. This is truly the greatest thing in drum and bass music to come out in recent years. Like, seriously. I just love the progression of the sound of Current Value. And the impressive thing is that out of all of those years that he makes music and I listen to his works, this has to be his best work of this decade, especially when it comes to terms of his neurofunk sound. This is impressive. It never ceases to amaze me with its ideas, with its impressive mind-blowing production, and just the whole thing. It's just one amazing track after the next. And I don't think there needs to be any more rambling. Just go and listen to any of those 50 albums if you want to. If you agree or disagree with any of this, you can have your own list. Put down in the comments. I would like to see what were your favorite albums from this year. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.